What is up people, this is YSHQ and in this video I'll be showing you how to use a rotary encoder with an Arduino and how it works. So let's get started. Now the first thing you'll need is a rotary encoder. So this is how a rotary encoder looks like. It, it, it has five fingers sticking out, two are for the switch and three are for the rotary encoder itself. This is the shaft which rotates and it presses as well. And in most cases you'll, you'll find a package like this where it has a knob and a PCB. And this PCB has two or three resistances which are soldered on and the rotary encoder itself. And to connect this, what you'll need is a Vmos D1 Mini. Now, this one was sent to me by Highlight Go, so major thanks to them. So now, if we want to look at how it works, so this is how the waveform would look like. But first, let's open up how it would be inside. So this is how it looks inside. So it would just be two points and a sliding contactor. So what would happen is this, let's say this is input A and input B or output A and output B. And this is a sliding contactor. So when you rotate the encoder, what would happen is the sliding contactor would either come in from one side or the other. So the part that touches first, its phase would pop in earlier, which would be something like this. This is the kind of discrepancy you would see. And the same thing would happen if it's the other one, if it comes around in the other way, which is like this. This is what it, it should ideally be when the contactor is on. So it would constantly be on or constantly be off, depending on the position it's at. But when there's a change or when you rotate it, this is the kind of waveform it would generate. Now this one is for a clockwise direction moment of the shaft. So if it moves clockwise, in my case, Input A was contacted first and input B after that. So there's a 90 degree phase difference in that. And hence, this is how you would detect it in the code or of whether it's moving clockwise or anti-clockwise. And it would also depend on how you connected the wires to the Arduino itself. And this is the other waveform where, it's, where it is anti-clockwise. And if you see, input B pops in first and input A pops in later. And this is about how the rotary encoder works. Now let's look at the code for that. Or while Arduino is popping up, look at this wiring diagram of how I connected everything. So if you look at this code, in this we define a few variables as value, pin A, pin B, encoder position, pin A's last condition, and a variable known as N. Then we define the pin A and P, pin B as inputs and set the C and set the baud rate at 115,200. Next we just set N as the, the digital read pin for pin A. And then pin A last equal equal low which you just check if last known position of pin A was low and for N equal to high which means that the condition of pin A changed from low to high and then we read pin B if that's low then we just decrement the position which means it's going in the anti-clockwise direction but if it's high then we increment it which means that it has already been acti it, it has already been activated and hence it would it's moving in the clockwise direction and then we just print the encoder position and then set pin a last to the value of n and that's about it that's as easy as it gets the the drawback of this switch is that it can miss a few rotations if the encoder is moved faster than it should be and hence this can you be used for small applications but for more precise ones we can just use the one which has which we use the library with now this is a more complete 
code and I actually use this in one of the projects which I might show in the future. So in this, we need a library known as ESP Rotary, which, which can be found in the libraries list. And I won't show you how to add it because we've done it in the past. And the same thing goes for ACE button, which is, which is a button library. Next, we define the rotary pins as pin 1 and pin 2, which are set to pin number 13 and 12 on the D1 mini and moves per click equal to 2. This is specifically for my encoder and in most cases you won't need this, but if for every turn or every tick on your encoder, if the value of the output is incremented by 2, you can just add the 2 over here and it will increment it by 1. Next, we set the button, so include ACE button using namespace ACE button and then we just define the button pin and we define it to the library that ace button pin is going to be pin number 14 and it makes and it generates an event handler for that next in the setup we define the baud rate as 115,200 then just give it a small delay next we set the events for the rotation and for that we would, we would set set change handler set left rotation handler and set right rot rotation handler and the directions for them as well and the same goes for the button in which we define the button pin as the input pull up button and then these three lines would be used to set the buttons and this final one set feature there are like a couple of features in this ace button library which you can look into its examples folder but the one i'll be showing you it's just gonna do something after you depress the click next we just run them in a loop so button dot check and r dot loop so if this detects a click on the button it's just gonna go to the event handler for ace button and then just uh, and then just print out button but if it detects a, a moment in the shaft, what it'll do, it will get the direction and it will turn it into a string and then print it. And then for the rotation, it will just get its, rota its, it'll get its position. And this position will increment or decrement based on the, the moment of the shaft. If it's going clockwise, it's going to increase. If it's going anticlockwise, it's going to decrease. So in the next segment, you'll see the working prototype in which I'm rotating the shaft as shown in the clockwise direction and if you look at the serial output it is incrementing it but if I turn it around and move it in the anti-clockwise direction the number goes down and it shows if it's going in the clockwise or the anti-clockwise direction and if I press this button then it shows that the button was pressed so thank you for watching this video like this video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't subscribe to the channel share it go through my other videos and stay tuned for the new videos